Hello guys and welcome to this video to discuss the treatment plan of some very nice cases and, and those cases are including decisions for example if we should uh, just do a restoration or if we should crown the tooth okay if we should provide cusp coverage so there are several criteria that we should follow I'm even recommending this article here it's uh, an interesting article uh, discussing some related topics and uh, let's just discuss the cases now okay so without further ado let's start with the case on the upper uh, left corner of your screen okay so this OPG that we are seeing here and of course there are a lot of things to be done here okay uh, we don't have the clinical information but let's try to discuss uh, based on this OPG because from this OPG we can actually take some very important decisions okay for example, we have here uh, this tooth, so the 3-6, the, the lower left molar, the uh, first molar, uh, indicated for extraction. So, uh, of course, it's indicated for extraction because we have the endoperial lesion, so it's not only a periapical lesion, it's also the vertical bone defect associated, and then for occasion exposure, well, there's basically no bone support for this tooth, okay? Now, it seems that we have the periapical lesion and then the, the surrounding limits of this lesion uh, in the bone are a little bit more radiopaque and this would be uh, an aspect of condensing osteitis that happens sometimes, you know, depending on the patient, okay? So sometimes you are going to see radiolucent uh, alterations and sometimes you are going to see radiopaque uh, alterations in response to inflammation and there are, of course, theories of inflammation explaining why it happens like this or like that but uh, that's exactly what we are seeing here okay so uh, there is even root resorption of course you guys are realizing this so especially the mesial root uh, and then we uh, we need to, to do something about this right so extraction here uh, and then even this um, could be the premolar or the canine which is displaced but uh, you know, uh, this tooth here <clears throat> in the upper right quadrant uh, has a, a huge horizontal bone defect, right? So marginal bone loss up to the uh, apical third of the root, and then what is the predictability of this tooth, right? So now what happens here? We have uh, to rehabilitate this case, okay? So uh, uh, assuming that we got rid of periodontal problems and all the the required extractions, then of course we need to rehabilitate this patient. The thing is that we have horizontal bone defect here as well on the upper left uh, posterior maxilla, but then okay maybe we could do dental implants of course, uh, but we need to, to do a prosthesis at least, right? The thing is that we also have some restorations to be done, we have tooth wear here, and if, we th if you think you can do a restoration in the anterior teeth uh, with predictability, of course, just remember that there is no posterior support, okay? So how you are going to do only restorations in the anterior quadrant if there, are, if there is no posterior support, right? So that's why uh, the first thing for the rehabilitation would be to rehabilitate the posterior areas here, okay? So uh, don't forget that we can do this uh, with a prosthesis, even with a removable prosthesis because of the extremities, the free extremities here. But then this molar here is not only with bone loss, but also over erupted, okay? That means that probably we need to, uh, to decrease the size of this crown here, even treating the root canal if necessary, to do, uh, to do lower crowns uh, more appropriate, okay? If there is over eruption of the upper and we try to do a smaller crown in the lower, then of course you guys are realizing that we don't have, we won't have curve of speed, okay? Which is one of the important principles of occlusion. If you guys don't remember the principles of occlusion, please go back to my video of principles of occlusion. I will add the link on the top right corner of this screen at some point, okay? Uh, so this, those would be the main decisions re related to this case and of course periodontal treatment you will be doing already because there is horizontal bone loss all over the place, right? Uh, now commenting a little bit of this case on the lower left uh, corner of your screen, the patient had pain okay, on the second premolar and uh, there was a fracture of the crown, okay? 
So this is actually just an image illustrating the situation uh, that was found for this case. So it was something like this. Okay, so uh, when uh, the crown was fractured and it, we could remove uh, or at least displace the fragment with an explorer, for example. Okay, now what to do in this case? You are actually moving the fragment with the explorer, and then you try to to stitch this together. To no, forget it. Okay, so you need to remove the fragment to see. First, where the fracture is actually going, okay? So remove the fragments. If the, frag if the fragment is not coming, if it's not fully fractured, then of course you need to use a burr to remove this fragment because it's now a fragment, it's fractured. And then you see until where the fracture is going, okay? So this should be a clinical diagnosis. Uh, we don't see this in the periapical radiograph. If you are suspecting of root fractures, then of course you could do a CBCT, but here in this case you need to see the crown fracture where the crown fracture is going, and what what is the uh, criteria for this decision? It's very simple. If the fracture extends uh, down to the gingival tissue and the alveolar crest, especially the alveolar crest, then no chance that you could be conservative enough to try to restore this tooth. Okay, then extraction would be more predictable. Right, but we need to do this first. Uh, root fractures here is not likely to be happening because I can see, even though the periodontal ligament space is well, it's not actually widened, right? So I can see the contour of the periodontal ligament space. There is a little bit of overextension of the endodontic uh, material here, but it doesn't seem uh, to have pathology in the periapical bone area. Okay, that means that. Um, Fractures are unlikely to be happening because when there is a root fracture, especially vertical root fracture, at the end of the root fracture, we have periodontal ligament space widening or it's likely that we are going to have periapical alterations. Okay, so those would be the most important criteria to this decision here. So, of course, you guys are realizing that we have this pope chamber being a little bit atrophic because we have, of course, a big metallic restoration here. But then, of course, we, are, we can just follow up there if there is no symptoms uh, related to this tooth, okay? considering at, at least the aspects that we are seeing only in the radiograph. All right, so now going to this upper middle uh, radiograph, uh, in, uh, the upper middle part of your screen, patient was feeling pain as well, and now, of course, you can also detect the problem only by this periapical radiograph, right? So you are seeing here that there is distal caries, so that, that's the thing. It, it's not the buccal metallic restoration, so th those would be most likely buccal metallic restorations. And then we have the caries here, so the distal caries, okay? And now take a look at this. Uh, periodontal ligament space widening, very clear, and even now a radiolucent lesion here at the distal side of the middle third of this root, and this could be most likely related to a vertical root fracture or a lateral root canal, okay? If we are suspecting a fracture, then of course you would proceed with a CBCT, okay? But then even if it's a lateral uh, root canal, a lateral canal, then uh, the prognosis is not so good for this tooth either, okay? So this is just a periapical radiograph. You would, of course, uh, include this in a, in a multidisciplinary prosthetic plan, a rehabilitation plan for this patient, but you should consider these alterations in your decision, okay? So we should investigate further. There is periodontal calculus here and here a little bit, so periodontal treatment is also required, we can see from this radiograph. And then we have this restoration here, buccal and occlusal restoration, but from this radio, the quality is not so good, but from this restoration, at least we, from this radiograph, at least we don't have periapical pathology. If there is no symptoms, you could at least follow up uh, this, this situation for longer. Okay, now going to the lower uh, radiograph at the center of your screen, then we have uh, a patient with pain in this lower uh, right quadrant, and uh, there is this metallic restoration and this radiolucency here at the crown, and then you would see that the contour of the enamel uh, is so still okay, but then of course you are not suspecting of distal caries, you are, you are suspecting of recurrent decay, right? So recurrent caries. Okay, pope chamber is atrophic, all right? There is a little bit of periodontal ligament space widening, of course, and then if the patient is in pain, then of course, this will lead to a root canal treatment because uh, the, the 
radiolucency of the carries are now in continuation with the radiolucent space of the pulp chamber. Okay, and then root canal treatment is the treatment indicated here. All right, there is also this tooth here, uh, the, the first molar, and then there is the buccal restoration. There, are, there is, of course, pulp chamber atrophy, but then there is a fracture of the occlusal surface, and then the decision is basically the same. Since the fracture was committed, uh, was involving the palatal cusps, then we need now cusp coverage, okay? So you don't have the palatal cusp anymore. If this is just a MOD, so a mesial occlusal distal restoration, or in this case, occlusal mesial, of course, then you could maybe do the restoration only. But uh, if you have a fracture of a palatal cusp, for example, then most likely you are going to do a preparation and the crown, okay? So this would be the indicated treatment. And uh, you need to correlate with the clinical diagnosis because most likely you should even treat the root canal considering these alterations that we are seeing here in the pulp chamber. But again, you would confirm first with the clinical diagnosis. All right? So if you guys liked, please hit the like button. We are going to comment more treatment plan about other cases in the future videos. So stay tuned for the next videos and see you guys.